Revelation, the 8th chapter, verse 6. If you have a study Bible, you will see the 8th chapter opens up with the 7th seal, which is the beginning of the seven trumpets. That is our text for tonight as we look at the seven trumpets judgment in what's called the seven years of tribulation. And the seventh angels and the seven angels who had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound them. And then he begins with the first and the second and goes through. Uh, we'll go through. Notice that you're going to have to keep turning your paper of his study Bible because you got. You're not going to reach the seventh trumpet until you get into the 11th chapter, verse 15. Say when you walk your way through there. So <clears throat> you have what we call interludes to this. There's pauses. Uh, probably not in real time, but pauses for us to get the stuff. I mean, it's seven years is seven years. So, but there is stuff going on in the midst of the seven trumpets that we, we call pauses, which, but I don't want you to think that we're talking about pauses in time. We're talking about pauses, maybe something like in order to catch your breath, but Things are going on behind the scene as this stuff is unfolding. And uh, now, <clears throat> if, if my paper gets a little bit cluttered with you, uh, John took this thing and uh, laid it out a little different for the web. It's actually a three-page he took the same information, just laid it out and spaced it more. So I say that to you, John, John does this often, and um, you can pick that up off our website. It, it'll be up there if you want to want to see it a different way. Uh, not the information, just the way it's laid out. So when we the seventh seal is the announcement of the seven trumpets. As we saw in the eighth chapter, where we are in verse six, and then it begins that that now here's the amazing thing: Revelation six chapter through the nineteenth are the three great judgments: the seven seals, the seven trumpets, and the seven bowls. But here's and 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 this was revealed to John, the apostle John on the island of Patmos, right? But listen. We're we're coming. This study is coming from the book of Daniel, not from the book of Revelation. I just I study in Daniel and this is where I wound up. So we'll go back to Daniel again. But listen. Here's what sometimes we miss. Revelation six through seven through 19, which is called the tribulational period and the and the three great judgments. Is one verse in Daniel. One verse. It's Daniel 927. Boom, there it is. That's all there is in Daniel. It's the tribulation. John, by revelation, was given, was laid, that whole thing was laid. See, that's the 70th week. That's Daniel's 70th week. Right? And what is between Daniel 69 and Daniel 70? Is the church. The mystery of the church. But it's just kind of interesting. I mean, one verse, just one statement, 70th week. And here it's a whole book devoted to the subject matter, isn't it? A whole, I mean, I mean, you take Revelation 6, 19, and you don't have much there, do you? As far as the book. So let's have a word of prayer, and we'll talk about the seven trumpets. I mean, people say to me, could you slow this down and study it more? Uh, yeah, I could, but I won't. And I'll tell you why. Because, listen, we won't be there. The church is not going to be in the tribulation. 
We made that crystal clear the other night. But I want you to know that all this stuff that's going to go on is going to be is going to occur in seven over a seven year period. <laughs> and it's going to be like lightning flashes as far as history. Boom, boom, boom. One right after another. You got six seals, seven trumpets, six bowls. And I mean. It's going to be it's going to devastate this world. We, we, you, we have never seen anything like this, and it's, there's not going to be any pauses in it. In the, listen, in the, at the end of the first three and a half years, half the population is destroyed. That's called the time of peace. <laughs> Holy catfish. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to walk you through. I'm going to show, I showed you the three, the six seals. I showed you the seven trumpets. I'm going to show you the six bowl, and we're going to go boom, 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 because that's the way it's going to roll. If you're not there, you're, it's kind of like watching the news tonight. And here is Marie going over Puerto Rico. Holy catfish! I mean, Irma just just hit them. I mean, they got to keep ladies out of there. I mean, they haven't caught their breath, and they're into another one that's even greater appears to be. Than the one that just hit him. <clears throat> That's what the tribulation is going to be like. Before you can catch your breath, another one's already on you. <clears throat> I mean, it. Well, anyhow, let's have a word of prayer and we'll talk about it. <clears throat> Give you a moment of silence as a believer or priest. The Holy Spirit, so spirit, the Bible is a spiritual book for spiritual people, for spiritual living. You cannot study it and get divine information apart from the ministry of the Holy Spirit. The natural man can't understand it. He has to have the Holy Spirit. Now, you got the Holy Spirit, but you can't study carnal. You have to study it spiritual. You have to be under the ministry of the Holy Spirit. The key to that is awareness of sin and what to do with it. The awareness of sin, the Holy Spirit will point it out in your life. Then what you have to do is confess it to, in order to get back into sanctificational experience. In other words, the ministry of the Holy Spirit. This is the system of how he works in the church age. He didn't work that way in other ages, but he does work that way in the church age. This is a church age phenomenon. You confess your sins for fellowship, not for relationship, is for fellowship. That it fellowship is through the dynamics of the ministry of the Holy Spirit. It is essential in Bible study. So 1 John 1, 9 would be a passage among many that says that if we confess our sin, talking to Christians, he's faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us. And that cleansing allows us back into, in, in not into salvation, but into sanctification. That is the ministry of the Holy Spirit. So, Father, we're thankful for that today. We pray the Holy Spirit would minister the truth of the word of God to us. Without Christ, at any given moment, without Christ, at any given moment, people living right now could go through the tribulation. If they're not a believer in the gospel of Jesus Christ right here, 2017, in September. Because when a rapture comes, it comes for those who are, are people who have placed their faith in the fact that Christ died for their sins, was buried and raised from the dead the third day, and they'll go up. And everybody else will go in the trip. And even the first three and a half years, as we have seen in the seals, is going to be I mean, it's going to be, this is terrible. We're talking about the, there's nothing to compare with it. So, I pray, Father, we would understand as we open the book and study the seven trumpets in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> Just in case you think that this book and this study of Revelation might not be relevant to us in the 
21st century, it could be very relevant if Christ comes back and takes his church, right? Then you're going to go through tribulation. Then this will become reality. This will become six o'clock news, 12 o'clock news. I mean, the news station is what will be the media uh, focus. So uh, the seventh seal announced the coming of the seven trumpets, as we said, as we read in Revelation 8, 6. If you still have that Revelation 8, look at verse 2, <clears throat> where he sets it up. He said, I saw the seven angels who stand before God, and seven trumpets were given to them. And then verse 6 that starts. Are you with me? That's important. Okay. It's not on your paper, but it's important uh, in, in regard to seven trumpets. So. We're going to look at the seven trumpets. The first trumpet is in verse 7, 8th chapter, verse 7. We have seven angels. Uh, Verse 7, the the first sounded trumpet, the angel with a trumpet. The first trumpet sounded, and watch, there came hail and fire mixed with blood, and they were thrown to the earth, and a third of the earth was burned up, a third of the trees were burned up, and all the green grass was burned up. In other words, agriculture, one third of all agricultural stuff is gone. Boom. I mean, just think if you, I'm a farm guy. I mean, that's, that's how, not, not today, but it's the way I was raised. Listen, if you were, if you were, if, if you made your living like many people in my community did uh, out of uh, apples and pears and, uh, Fruit, uh, they sold to Gerber baby food. All of us sold to them in uh, Fremont, Michigan. But you're gone. If you, if you were farmers like we were, uh, that you, we raised all of our crops that we fed everybody with everything with, we're done. With a third of your agriculture is gone. Boom, just like that. third, not just a third of a region, a third of the earth. Talking about the earth. Man, who even thinks that way? A third of the earth. Whew. Then the second angel or the second trumpet in verses eight and nine, you see that? Eight and nine. The second angel sounded, and it was something like, and sounded, and something like a great mountain burning with fire. I guess we would say something like a volcano. With fire was thrown into the sea, and a third of the sea became blood, and a third of the creatures of the sea that had life died. And look at this a third, third of the ships on the sea were destroyed. Boy, I mean, you talk about a third of the ships. I mean, two types of ship, I suppose, out there. I mean, as far as ships, it it would be either industry, right, cargo type of things, or, or military. Boom, gone. One reason I joined the Navy right now. All right. Oh, grandpa, grandma and grandpa are gone, and you just signed up for the Navy. What happened to them? Well, I don't know, something about a rapture. Don't go in the Navy. Get in the Navy. Well, anyhow, See, I'm just trying to tell you reality, right? I mean, a third of the ship, it didn't say which ones. It didn't say what flag. It just said if you're on the sea, a third of them gone. Um. Then in 10, what, through 11, 10, 11, I guess, third trumpet. And it, listen, isn't this interesting that God puts this thing in math? Now, my son-in-law, Dave, loves this stuff. He, he would all tell, already told me what, how much a third of the earth would actually be 
and he would have already told me how many how many ships are normally on the sea by now and how what mathematically that would be i mean we don't even if it comes time to tip we just all say to him well, how much and he tells us and they go boom there it is i uh, i suppose many people who are engine engineers now he's a pastor but he he's got a degree in engineering i think that way um but anyhow um it's interesting to me. I'm just saying it's interesting to me that he, he, he a third, a third, a half, a fourth. Uh, and then he, he gives numbers like 7,000 and things. Pay attention to that stuff. I mean, say, who's counting? God? <laughs> no, who's counting? Uh, I mean, I can't keep up with all this. Somebody is. Thank God. Thank God. A third angel sound. Verse 10, and the third angel with the trumpet sounded, sounded, that's a trumpet, and a great star, probably Elvis Presley or somebody like that, <laughs> a great star fell from heaven, <laughs> a great star fell from heaven, burning like a torch, and it fell on a third of the rivers and on the springs of water. And the name of that star is called Wormwood. And a third of the water became Wormwood. And as a result, many men died from the water because they were made bitter. In other words, normally it's not poison, but this time it was. Now we're, we got a third of the water, right? A of this star falls. And now we've got a third of the rivers and the springs of water. So you're going to have to give up that water bottle you got that we we look to see if it's if it comes from natural springs. We got to give that up, right? Or you'll die if you drink it. <laughs> then we got verse 12. We're we're now at the fourth trump, 12 to 13. The fourth angel sounded, that's a trumpet. And a third of the sun, a third of the moon, a third of the stars were smitten. Now, I guess I know what a third of the moon is, because I see a fourth and I see a third and a half and a right, right, right. I fair it's round, at least from where I stand. So I go like, well, that's area. But a third of the stars. Listen, only person I know how what number that is would be the Lord. Because he's numbered them all, and he's named them all. I mean, how good is that? Well, a third of the third of the sun, a third of the moon, and a third of the stars are smitten, so that a third of them, watch this now, so that a third of them might be darkened on the day, they will not shine, and a third of the night be the same way. Now, here's what Dave would tell me. The 24-hour day has just shrunk to 16 hours. Think about that. Just think about that for a minute, because that's just what he said. Right? You know, we we got half a, half a day of light, half a day of, right? Not anymore. Not anymore. Now, I don't even know. I mean, how does that work? We, we, we got a planet that's supposed to be going, right? And that's day one and day two and day three. That ain't working that way anymore. Not working on a 24-hour system anymore, right? It is not working on a 24-hour system. Come on. Working on a 16-hour system. Well, anyhow, let's think about that. That's everywhere. That's not in Alaska. It's everywhere. That's your day. Wow. And I looked uh, at thir verse 13. Uh, that's 12 and 13. That was it, wasn't it? 12 and 13. But thir verse 13. And I looked, and I heard an eagle flying, 
and I heard as it was an eagle flying in mid heaven, and saying with a loud voice, now pay attention to this, whoa, whoa, whoa. What trumpet is this? Now, is this important? What trumpet? Fourth. How many more trumpets have we got? We have three more. And guess what's going to happen with the last one? The last one is going to announce the seven bowls. The last three trumpets and seven bowls is going to have the three woes. If you thought things were bad up to now, the earth has just fallen under the woe of God. I'm talking about Max Raft. Not talking football. <laughs> we're not talking to horses when we used to say woe. Those who dwell on the earth because of the remaining blast of the trumpet of the three angels who are about to sound. This woe was going to be six and seven, but seven is going to open up the seven bowls, which is your third woe. Which we will talk about next week. Wow. Mm -mm -mm. Then you have the there, there. Now you have the fifth trumpet in the ninth chapter, and you have a study Bible. It tells you we're at the the fifth trumpet, and the first twelve verses is there, and you got a fifth angel sounds sounded. That's the trumpet. I saw a star from heaven which had fallen to the earth, and the keys of the bottomless pit was given to him. That's the bottomless pit is the Tyrus's. That's the place where the fallen angels of Genesis 6 are. One day, uh, at the end of the tribulation, Satan will be put there. The, the, the demons were always afraid. Every time they met Jesus, they went, oh, whoa, you're not going to send us to the abyss, are you? Well, eventually I will, but not now. Mm -hmm. This ninth chapter is really important because these are the angel, the fallen angels that got engaged that caused the fall of what we call the flood of Noah. And they, they cohabited with, 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 with humans and created a super race called the Nephilim. You're going to meet these people and you're going to, you're going to meet their leader. They're going to be released. Onto the last three and a half years of the tribulation. Because that's where we are now. We're in the woes of the last three and a half years. He opened a bottomless pit and smoke come out, out of the pit like smoke of a great furnace. And the sun and the air were darkened by the smoke of the pit. And out of the smoke came forth something that looked like a locust upon the earth. And power was given to them. Power like a scorpion. Uh, but power on earth. They were told that they should not hurt the grass of the earth or any green thing or any tree, only the men who do not have a seal of God on their forehead. You know, everybody makes a big deal about the mark of the beast and never the mark of the Lord. Just telling you. There's going to be two groups of people. Some are going to be sealed with the mark of the Lord, and some are going to be sealed with the mark of the of the beast. You know, this the 666. Mm -mm. No, it's probably a cross. Uh, I don't know. Uh, the seal of God on their forehead. Probably the name of Christ, don't you imagine? Something like that. I, I don't know. There's no other name like it. I don't know. I don't know. Johnny can tell you after class, probably. Right, Johnny? Johnny, you could probably tell us after class. Wake up now, Johnny. I caught him asleep. No. Well, then, I know. Next time I'll call on Shirley to tell you. They were not permitted to kill anyone. That's important. They were not permitted to kill anyone, but to torment them. Watch this. For five months.
Five months. Guess how the first three, the first five months of the last three and a half years is going to go. Uh, like the torment of a scorpion when it stings a man. Listen, it'll be, it'll be bad. And in those days, men will seek death. They say, well, get him into the emergency. But they said, I can't. I, there's no antidote that seems to work for this. No kidding. You got, just stung, you got stung by the power of hell. Right? Where did, where did, this, thing, where did this come from? The abyss. And will not find it. They will seek death and not find it. They will long to die and death will flee from them. And the appearance of the locusts was like, like horses. Now, this is not real. You understand this is a vision. Like horses prepared for battle. On their heads were crowned like gold. Their faces were like the face of men. They had hair like the hair of women, and their teeth were like the teeth of iron. Who are these people? These, these are fallen angels that were engaged in Genesis 6 through 9, right? Don't forget who we're talking about. And they had breastplates like breastplates of iron, and the sound of their wings were like the sound of chariots uh, of many horses rushing to battle. And they had tails like sc scorpions and stings, and their tails is in their power to hurt men for five months. They have a king over them. The angel of the abyss, his name in Hebrew is Zabadnan, and in Greek, Apollon, which is in both languages mean destruction. The first woe was passed. Two more woes to go. Then the sixth angel sounded, verse 13. The sixth angel sounded. I heard, I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God. One said to the sixth angel who had the trumpet, release the four angels who are bound at the great river Euphrates. And the four angels who had been prepared, watch this, for the hour, the day, the month, and the year. No man knows, right? No man knows. But buddy. They are prepared for the call. They are prepared. They are prepared for the hour, the day, the month, the year, and were released so that they might kill a third of mankind. The number of the armies of the horsemen were two million, and I heard the number of them. Many think that what they're talking about is what's later going to be called Armageddon. They're going to cross the Euphrates. This is how I saw in the vision the horses and those who sat on them. The riders had breastplates of the color of fire and hyacinthin and of brimstone. And the heads of the horses were like the heads of lions. And out of their mouths proceeded fire, smoke, and brimstone. Verse 18. But I want you to remember, a third of mankind was killed by these three plagues, by the fire, the smoke, and the brimstone, which proceeded out of the mouth of the enemy. For the power of the horses is in their mouth and in their tails, for their tails are like serpents in their heads, and they have heads. The serp their tails are like serpents and have heads, and with them they do harm. And the rest of mankind who were not killed by these plagues did not repent. Is that not amazing? Is that not amazing? Man, I'd have been screaming bloody murder from the very start of that deal. <clears throat> huh? I used to walk in, you know, with little kids, we had to get shots out of everything. You know, you go in, they gave you 26 shots for something. Man, I would, I would start, I would start crying as soon as I, I, I was like the dog when you took to the vet, won't get out of the car. I was that I was that kid. I can relate to that animal. You don't have to go in and get no shots. Come home with me. Um, oh, no doubt about that. No doubt about that. 
No doubt about that. And the rest of mankind who were not killed by these plagues did not repent of the works of their hands. See what they're engaged in. So as not to worship demons, they wouldn't, wouldn't stop. Or idols of gold and silver, brass and stone and wood, which neither can see, nor hear, nor walk. <clears throat> right? <clears throat> and they did not repent of their murders, or of their sorceries, or of their immoralities, nor of their thefts. Then, <clears throat> we call it an interlude or a pause. It's only to tell you something unique. It doesn't, we're not talking about time and history. We're just talking about what God has to say is going on during the same period. <laughs> but it, notice we're at the sixth trumpet and there's this event. <clears throat> I saw another strong angel coming down out of him, clothed with a cloud, rainbow upon his head. His face was like the sun and his feet were like pillars of fire. <clears throat> and in his hand, he had a little book, which was open. <clears throat> He placed his right foot on the sea and his left hand on the land on a, and the left on the land. And he cried out with a loud voice as <clears throat> when iron roars. And when he had cried out, the seven pearls of thunder uttered their voices. <clears throat> now watch what they're watch. This is really important because we don't know what they said, but it was revelation. It was rather we got one woe past, right? Two woes to come. And this little book is going to give divine revelation about it. It's going to give divine revelation about it. And listen, and then it before and then it's going to be sealed not to be spoken of. Watch this. This is really interesting. And when the seven pearls of thunder had spoken, I was about to write. I heard a voice from heaven say, whoa, 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 whoa. Seal up the things which the seven pearls of thunder have spoken. Do not write them. The angel whom I saw <clears throat> standing on the sea and on the land lifted up his right hand to heaven and swore an oath. By him who lives forever and ever, who created the heavens and the earth in it and the earth and the things in it and the sea and the things in it. That there shall be no delay, no longer. Whoa, whoa, the two woes to come. Are going to come. Wow. In the day. Verse 7. And in the day the voice of the seventh angel. When he is about to sound. But in the day of the voice. Of the seventh angel. You, we, we, right. We're waiting on that seventh trumpet. When, 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 it, when it sounds. Then the mystery of God. Is finished. You know. That's like. Christ on the cross, finished. Here it is, finished. And he preached to his servants and his prophets. And the voice which I heard from heaven, I heard again. Speaking with me, saying, go take the book which is open in the hand of the angel who stands on the sea and on the land. I went to the angel. I told him to give me the little book. And he said to me, Yes, take it and eat it. It will make your stomach bitter, but in your mouth it will be sweet as honey. In other words, the prophecy that's going to be given to him is going to be really good. But the fulfillment of it is going to be bitter, really bitter. So I took the little book out of the angel's hand and I ate it. And it was so, my mouth sweet as honey. And then after I ate it, my stomach was bitter. And they said to me, you must prophesy again concerning many people, nations, tongues, and kings. And there was given to me a measuring rod, like a staff. And someone said, rise, measure the temple of God and the altar and those who worship in it. But leave out the court. On the outside of the temple, that is the Gentile court, for it has been given to the nations or Gentiles. And they will tread underfoot the holy city for 42 months. That's our last three and a half years. I will grant authority to my two witnesses. 
They will prophesy for 1260 days. That's three and a half years. You remember Jewish calendar, right? 30. Clothed in sackcloth. In other words, their, their, their great witness is to preach the gospel and the eminence of the judgment of God upon them. Sackcloth. Not going to be dressed like anybody in this room to that way. Sackcloth. These are the two olive trees and the two lampstands that stand before the Lord on the earth. And if anyone desires to harm them, fire proceeds out of their mouth and devours their enemy. And if anyone desired to harm them in this manner, he must be killed. These have the power to shut the heavens. That's why they think it may be Elijah and Moses from what's described here. To shut up the sky in or, and, and also, you know who met with Jesus in the transfiguration? Yeah, that's another reason. The two guys. In order that rain may not fall during the days of their prophesying. And that they have power over the waters to turn them into blood. That's why they think Moses. And to smite the earth with every plague as often as they desire. And when they had finished their testimony, the beast that came out of the abyss, you know, that's the Apollon guy, will make war with them and overcome them and kill them. And their debt, watch this, it shows you, shows you how bad this is going to be. Why they won't repent. Listen to this. Listen, this is six o'clock news. Their dead bodies will lay in the street of the great city, which mystically, mystically is called Sodom and Egypt, which is Jerusalem. Where also the Lord was crucified. That's how we know where. Agreed. Where the Lord was crucified. And those from the people, tribes, tongues, and nations, as described earlier, will look at their dead bodies for three and a half days and will not permit their dead bodies to lay in a tomb. They won't bury them. And those who dwell on the earth will rejoice. Watch. L listen to me what they're going to do. Listen to this. They're going to rejoice. Over they're going to celebrate for three and a half days. They're going to have a worldwide celebration for three and a half days. The entire world is going to agree to take three and a half days to celebrate this killing of these two witnesses. And watch what they're going to do. They will make Mary and they will send gifts. Mary what? Mary with gifts is what? Christmas. 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 To one another because those two prophets tormented those who dwell on the earth. They tormented them. They told them the truth, told them judgment was coming, gave them a little bit of it, just a taste of it, so they wouldn't get the blunt of it. They killed them. Then they then they mocked God by having a three and a half day, three and a half days of Christmas. Jeez. After three and a half days, the breath of life, Nisha Mahayim, from God came into them, and they stood on their feet, and great fear fell upon all those who beheld them. Isn't it funny? They wouldn't listen to the word of God, but they'll, jeez. And they heard a loud voice from heaven saying to them, come up here. And so the two uh, witnesses went up into heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. You know what it did? He not only raised him, but caused him to ascend like Christ. And everybody saw him. You remember like in Acts 1, where Christ ascends back and everybody says, as you've seen him going. Eh. In that hour, there was a great earthquake. Boy, I mean, right where, right where they crucified Christ, where we had the earthquake. And a great earthquake. Watch this now. We're back to math. A tenth of the city fell. Boom. And 7,000 people were killed in the earthquake. That's in one little dinky city. And the rest were terrified and gave glory to, gave glory to God of heaven. Watch this. The second woe is past. Behold, the third one's coming. We got two gone. Only one left, and it's kaboot. 
seventh trumpet, right? Your Bible says drunk. Now we're to the seventh trumpet. Look, we've gone through all of that to get to the seventh trumpet. No time has gone off the clock. Of course, the clock is only 16 hours, but the seventh angel sounded trumpet, and there arose loud voices in heaven saying, the kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ, and he will reign forever and ever. You talk about a UN, UN speech, there's going to be one right there. That's the UN speech. And the 24 elders who sat on the throne before God fell on their face and worshiped God and said, we give thanks to thee, O Lord God, the almighty, who art, who was, because thou hast taken thy great power and has began to reign. Now all the nations were enraged and their and thy wrath came and the time came for the dead to be judged and the time to give the reward to their bond servants and prophets and to the saints and to those who fear thy name, the small and the great, and to destroy those who destroy the earth. And the temple of God, which is in heaven, was opened and the Ark of the Covenant. You know, everybody wants to know where the Ark of the Covenant is. Well, there it is. The temple of God, which is in heaven, was opened and the Ark of the Covenant appeared in his temple. And there were flashes of lightning and sounds and pearls of thunder and an earthquake and great hailstorm. Now we have another pause. We, we've got another pause. The woman, which is Israel. And a great sign appeared in heaven. A woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet and on her head was a crown of 12 stars. She was with child. Pay attention to this now. She was with child. She cried out, being in labor and in pain to give birth. A red dragon, Satan. Another sign appeared in heaven. Behold, a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns, and on his head were seven diadems. His tail swept away a third of the stars of heaven. You remember where that comes from? Right. Right. Ezekiel 28. And his tail swept away a third of the stars of heaven and threw them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman who was about to give birth. So that when she gave birth, he might destroy her child. But that's a lot of history there in there. That's a whole lot of history. And she gave birth to the son, a male child, who, who is to rule all the nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up to God and to his throne. We've gone all the way through the crucifixion. We've gone to the, resur the re resurrection and ascension. The woman fled into the wilderness. Where now Listen, Israel, that's who Israel was, right? They give birth to the Messiah. The woman fled into the wilderness where she had a place prepared by God so that there, there she might be nourished for 1,260 1, days. That's the last three and a half years. Then there's a war. There was, from this came a war. There was a war in heaven. Michael and his angels waging war with the dragon. The dragon and his angels waged, waged war. And they were not strong enough, and there was no longer a place found for them in heaven. The great dragon was thrown down, the serpent of old, who is called the devil Satan, who deceives the whole world. And he was thrown down to earth, and his angels were thrown down with him. I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, look how much scripture is being given. You get to heaven, you know what, you're, if you're taught a Bible study, of course you'll have a good teacher there, but. But what do you think? What do you think the book you're going to read? I mean, the major book in heaven. Oh, OK. Now, now the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ have come for the accuser of our brethren has been thrown down who accuses them before God day and night. You know what this war in heaven does is excommunicated him from heaven because up to this time he's had the you know, he could go before and bring accusations like Job one and two. Not anymore. Not anymore. Next place you're going is to the abyss. And they overcame him because of the blood of the lamb and because of the word of their testimony. They did not love their life even to death. For this reason, rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. Woe to the earth and the sea because the devil has come down to you. This is the third woe. The 
This is the third woe. The devil has come down to has come down to you, having great wrath, knowing that he has only a short time. And when the dragon saw that he was thrown down to earth, excommunicated, he persecuted the woman who gave birth to the male child. And two wings of the great eagle were given to the woman in order that she may fly into the wilderness to her place where she was nourished for a time and a time and a half of a time, that three and a half years, from the presence of the serpent. The serpent poured out water like a river out of his mouth after the woman so that he might cause her to be swept away with the flood. You know, God just takes care of his people, doesn't he? And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened its mouth and drank up the water, the river, which the dragon had poured out of his mouth. And the dragon was enraged with the woman and went off to make war with the rest of her offspring who kept the commandments of God and hold to the testimony of Christ. Those are the ones that have the mark of God on them, not the mark of the beast. Okay? Well, now you have another one, and that is, and I'm going to skip it, because I'm going to do a whole study on that. But we have the beast from the sea, right? We have the beast from the sea. We have the beast from the sea. All right. So I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to go through that. So let's. Did we pick up? Did we pick up the seventh? The seventh trumpet. We picked up the seventh trumpet. Okay, that's the main thing. I want you to. I want you to get through. It goes all the way through the thirteenth as the two beast. We have the dictator revived Roman Empire, the beast uh, from the sea. Then we have the dictator of Palestine called the false prophet. He's the beast from the earth, the land. That's chapter thirteen. Uh, the lamb and the hundred forty-four thousand we've met earlier will be back. Um. So I, I want you to I want you to be able to pick up this this um, seventh trumpet, which is going to go from eleven fifteen to the fourteenth chapter, verse twenty. Do you understand that? It's going to go all the way through that. You want to pay attention in chapter fourteen. You there's going to be uh, one of the things in chapter fourteen is going to be important. Is going to start in verse six. And I saw another, I'm in 14.6, I saw another angel flying in mid heaven, have an eternal gospel to preach to those who were still alive on the earth and to every nation, tribe, tongue, and people. And uh, he said, this is the angelic evangelism of the last three and a half years. And he said with a loud voice, fear God and give him glory because of the hour of his judgment has come. We're in the third woe in a moment. And worship him who made the heavens and the earth, the sea, and the springs of water. Another angel, a second one followed. Fall and fall is a Babylon the Great. And then he goes on and he talks about more. I'm, I'm not going to go through all that because I'm going to come back later and pick that up. I'm going to come back and pick all that up. I want you to go to chapter 15 because we're still in that seventh. All of this is part of that seventh trumpet. All, that, all of this is part of that seventh trumpet. Okay? All this is part of the seventh trumpet. Verse 15. And I saw another sign in heaven, great, marvelous, seven angels. See, here's, here's where we're going to. This is the announcement of the seven bowls, the last woe judgment. Are you with me? I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous, seven angels who had seven plagues. They're called the bowls. Which are the last, because in them the raft of God is finished. And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass. And then he goes on to describe this, this whole deal. And now when we get into verse 16, see, that's the announcement. When we get into 16, we're into the seven bowls. We're into the last judgment and the last woe. Are you with me? Okay. So when we come back next week, I'm going to go through the seven bowls. Before I leave it, that'd be the third woe and the final judgment. Agreed? Third woe and the final judgment. Now, you can read some of this stuff on your own, right? I mean, <clears throat> it's all part of that seventh deal. And the, all the stuff that's going on. Uh, but here's, I want, you, I want to bring you up to speed. We are now through, we are now through six seals and seven trumpets. 
because next time we're going to bowls. If you've kept up with numbers, like Dave, now he, he told me the other day what this number is. It's over fit for me, it's over 50%. 50 percent. Fifty by the time we come to the seven bowls, fifty percent of the people of the earth have died. Just think about that. You know, a fourth of them and then a third. This means that over 50% of mankind has already died under the first tribulational judgments. This, mean, this means that the last woe and the seven bowls is going to get the rest. Of the wrath of God. Now listen. We believe the rapture could come at any moment. We don't know the time, the day. There's nothing that we know that once the rapture comes, we start countdown. We know we got seven years deals, and we know how that seven years is going to run. I mean, we know all this way ahead of time. Here's what we don't know. We don't know when that time will come. It could come. Listen, it could come in at Listen, Paul thought it would come in his generation. John thought it would come in his generation. We all believe the rapture could come in our generation. We just believe that. Everybody in the church age has always believed the regeneration of the rapture. Because we don't know when it'll come, we just know it's going to come. And everybody has looked out at the earth and said, over, over every generation of Christians, they thought nothing could get worse than it is. He's bound to come. But why doesn't he? Because of 2 Peter 3.9. God is not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. So you can see it in the last seven years, the mercy of God that's extended. He puts people in, in a place that they have no other choice but God, and they still don't choose it. They choose death over God. Isn't that, isn't that miserable? Choose death over God. So here's, what, here's my point as I close today. If you're... I can't speak for people who are here. I, I know most of you, but I, you know, I can't speak for your, where you are with the Lord. But, so I'm going to speak to the Internet people who are with me yet, I hope. You could very well go through the tribulation if you don't believe the gospel of Jesus Christ. If you do not believe that he died for your sins, was buried and raised from the dead third day to give you life everlasting, if the rapture came tonight, it could well do at midnight. It could, it could be a midnight call. And when you wake up in the morning, you'll be going through the tribulation. So, before you go to bed tonight, maybe you ought to have one of those come to Jesus praying times. Maybe you ought to have one of those come to Jesus meetings. If you want to be saved, the work's already been done. You don't work to get saved. You believe to get saved. You believe that he died for your sins, was buried and raised from the dead third day. If you believe it, you get saved. If you get saved, you go, in, you go in the rapture. You don't go through the tribulation. If you don't do it, can I tell you, when you wake up in the morning and the rest of us are gone, you need to get saved because you are going to need every bit of God to go through these seven years of tribulation. You're going to need every bit that you can squeeze out of your faith. Because this is going to be hell on earth. This is going to be terrible. And if you want to roll the dice, that's up to you. But here's what's coming. I mean, don't be a fool about this whole thing. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. So I'm going to give everybody a moment to reflect on that, especially those that are somewhere out there, somewhere in the world. I want you to know tomorrow morning you could wake up and you could be in the tribulation. But you don't have to be. I was talking to a guy the other day as we was talking about this. and He said, man, I've lived more hell on earth. I'm not worried about anything. So I gave him a couple of passages to read. And I said, that's all right. You ought to read those. Let me give you a couple places to read. And if you still feel that way, go for it, big guy. What can I tell you? You roll the dice, but I tell you, I can tell you how it's going to come up. It's going to come up snake eyes. Right? 
the red dragon. It's going to look like a red dragon in the morning. Shoot, man, don't, don't be stupid. Father, we're so thankful for these that have come our way to study with us tonight. Thankful I'm not going to go through the tribulation. What we call tribulation in the church age is nothing compared to this. It's testing to make us stronger in our faith, to give us character building, all those things that are all positives, not negatives. Well, I pray, Father, that whoever hears the voice, the sound of the voice and the voice of grace would understand that God wants to save you by grace through faith and not of yourself as a gift of God, not of works, least any man should boast. Come into the kingdom. Come into the kingdom. Come into the kingdom. Come in today. Behold, today is the day of salvation. Because it's been offered to you, that's why.